Hello there and welcome to MCI Studios with me, Pippin Henderson. Um, we're looking at Sonar's new X1 producer edition door. Um, this is the first and hopefully a long line of tutorials to come and we're going to be looking at the basics of Sonar X1 today. Um, we're going to jump straight into creating tracks, naming them, um, group leveling, group selecting and uh, and so on. So we're going to go jump straight in. We've got a, a few options here. When you first open up Sonar you come to the quick start box and at the top here we've got open a project and then we've got open a recent project and here you have a drop down list of all the uh, recent projects you've been working on. You can select one and open it up here. Create a new project and here we have a tab for online videos. Um, I do suggest that you go ahead and look at these. There's some valuable information on there. But what we're going to be using today is create a new project. So go ahead and select that. It brings up a new box. Go ahead and name the project. Select the location you want that project to be saved to. Uh, and the audio path, that's um, where your audio from the project will be saved to. So if you want it saved to a different path, um, like uh, to an external hard drive, that kind of thing. So go ahead and uh, select it there. In the template list here, just click Normal and click OK. And what that's going to do is open up a nice, clean, blank template for us. Uh, however, we do have some things here which I'll go into more detail at a later point but now um, if you can uh, just minimize these views for me if you come up here to where there's a double arrow it says collapse go ahead and just collapse all these views here that one to the left the one down the bottom and this one to the right and what that's left us with is a nice clear track view here but what we want to do actually is delete everything all these tracks here, we want to delete them and start fresh. So if you come up here to where there's a number one, if you select it, hold down and drag, you'll notice that it uh, selects more than one at the same time. You're multi selecting tracks. So with those two highlighted, right click one of them, come down here to delete track, and it'll delete both of them at the same time. Same principle with the buses here. Right click, delete, right click delete bus okay and there's a button down here show slash hide bus pane if you click that it just gets rid of that window there okay so what we want to do is start from scratch but there are a few things that I want to go over first before we start doing that over here is like um, like a tape cassette um, buttons here we've got play stop rewind pause fast forward and here's our record button here this bar here skips you along in the timeline. This is your timeline here. This is where all your recorded tracks will be. Over here we've got our tempo. and This can be altered by clicking it and entering in a new figure. We have our key signature. We have the sample rate. At the moment it's 44.1. And we have the, um, the audio engine which can be turned on or off. Over here just to the right is our metronome settings. Um, this button here makes sure that there's a metronome during record and this one is metronome during playback. Just to the right of that over here we have like some universal buttons here. We have uh, a universal mute that will mute all the tracks that you have in uh, the track view here. Again with the solo. Effects, this will um, uh, turn all the effects that you have uh, selected in each track on or off um, so you can do like an, an A-B comparison between what it sounded like with the effects and what it will sound like without the effects so you, you get a rough idea of what kind of progress you're making with each track but the uh, the real new thing I want to I want to talk to you about is this little section here this is brand new to the Sonar X1 door and something that really does help uh, when it comes to editing and um, sort of cutting and pasting your tracks as you're going along. So what we have here, the first one here is a smart tool. And what that's going to do is basically 
does the job of pretty much all of them except for um, the trim tool and the split and timing. What it will do is, depending on where it is you place your cursor within the track, depends on what action it will do. And then all these ones here are specific um, to their job. So if I was to select the select tool, all it would do is enable, is, is enable me to select each track and nothing else. So you haven't got to worry about accidentally um, altering a track or deleting a track because all it's going to do is select it. Go back on the smart tool. We can actually bring this up at any time by clicking the right, the, clicking the middle mouse button, sorry, and it brings it up here. It's exactly the same. Okay, so we're going to jump straight in now to the track view. And if you go ahead and in the track view, right click and select insert audio track. And that's going to create a brand new track for us to have a look at. And what I will try and get you, um, get you into the habit of doing is naming your track as soon as you've as soon as you've created it so you know exactly what its job is and you're not confused as to what it does because when you start creating tracks all the time and you've got like 12 18 tracks on the go and you haven't named them you've got to go through them all and see what each of them does whereas if they're named you know exactly what they do and uh, where they are within the mix you can also come up here to this little picture here and there's like a little wave form here and you can right click on it and load track icon now sonar x1 comes with loads of little pictures and this is a guitar so if we come down here to the guitars here and guitars electric it comes with loads of pictures of guitars here so you can put that in there and not only does it say that it's a guitar track but now you have visual confirmation that that track is actually uh, a track for your guitar so that's always handy to know okay so let's go through some of what these buttons do here within the track we have just like up here we have the universal mute and universal solo down here we have them specifically for this track so if I muted this one it would literally just mute this track and no others we have the solo uh, we have our arm this is different to this button up here as this is the actual record button this one just arms this track ready for recording and you can arm as many as you want and then you come up here and you click the record button there we have our monitor button here this little drop down view here is uh, is kind of a new feature to X1 um, and we'll get into that a little bit later um, for the moment we'll just concentrate on some of these more basic ones here if you come up to this little drop down box here it'll say custom well if you come up here to where it says all and click that it'll give us a few more uh, a few more things to look at we have our volume here which can be selected and dragged and this is uh, minus and plus in decibels double click it We'll center it back to its default position we have pan here left and right again double clicking will um, center it back we have the gain here same principle and here we have our inputs and our outputs and we'll go into that um, at another later date we're just really looking at the basics and getting some tracks down ready for recording in our next tutorial so if I go ahead and repeat the process we've just done with the guitar track, right click, audio track, and name this one bass, I drop this down, right click, load track icon, and we're going to skip back to bass, and we'll select this nice little blue bass here. Okay, so we've skipped along here and I've just basically repeated uh, that process twice again. I've added some drums, I've had, got the picture here, I've added some vocals, got a microphone down there. Same principle, right clicking and loading in a track icon. Okay, so what I want to um, um, get looking at now is a, a lovely little shortcut that I, I use all the time. And that is if you've got track views here and they're all over the place, different sizes, and you want to quickly 
get them all to um, the same size, um, just to get a rough look at um, the the track views. You can you, you can select the tracks you want to manipulate. Uh, as you know, like we like I showed you earlier, click on the the number, click and hold. Sorry, click click and hold and drag down the track views like that. Multi select, and if you click F on your keyboard, what that will do is snap the um, audio tracks in the same size in the view here. So it just makes everything nice and neat and uh, nice to work with. Another trick you're going to want to learn is to, before you even start recording anything, you want to get your levels right. So when there's audio coming in, it's not going to be peaking and you don't want to have to start adding effects um, to get the levels right afterwards. You want that mix to be right coming in. It's pure signal. You want it to be bang on. So same principle as before. You're going to click and hold and drag. So all the tracks are selected down here and you can see that by these gray boxes that are surrounding the numbers. Hold control and go to where it says volume here on any one of the tracks. Hold and drag. You'll notice there's like an orange bar that's appeared right next to the volume. Well, if you start moving one, you'll notice they all move at the same time. And I kind of, when, I've, when I'm working with um, electrical equipment such as guitars, basses, and that kind of thing, is I kind of set it as um, a minus five dB. And when it comes to, if you're using separate tracks on drums, you know, if you've got a separate track for your snare, your hi hat, your cymbals, your bass drum, I tend to put that as minus seven just because they're going to be louder and um, the mix coming in is going to be a lot stronger. So you're going to want to knock that off just a little bit more. Okay, in here we've got the uh, effects box here. We're going to get into this in a, a, a bit more detail uh, later on. But if you right click in here, you've got some audio effects here. You've got all these audio effects to play around with. I do suggest going in, um, having, um, you know, having a play and see what things do. I do recommend looking at these ones in this section here. Some brilliant um, effects that... Um, I really do rely on and uh, I, I don't know where I'd be without them so especially this boost 11 have a play with that okay so basically we've got our tracks laid out we're ready to start recording um, but we're gonna continue that in our next tutorial so if you go ahead and click file and save I won't save mine but you save yours and uh, I'll see you next time for the next tutorial